Uh, not a fan of the hero, but I think this game is actually pretty okay. There's not like any mm -hmm. real good lockdown options against him. And you're playing into a Timbersaw, which the lane is a little bit rough for the Ursa once Timbersaw gets closer to level six. But for the most part, the lane's pretty easy for him early on, especially with a Bane, like a hero that trades fairly well. So I do like it. The Invoker here is very good, though, because this is probably Shaggy's Necrophos. Most likely, they can take it off lane for Tib. They flexed it definitely before. Dude, why didn't they ban out uh, the, the faces for it? I feel like Void is incredibly good here. Yeah, they'll probably look at banning it next. It's it's just like in this game specifically, it's probably going to be a Quas Wax Invoker. But if you give them faces void, you know, going for Exhort's really not. You that still big have of a, a lot to throw into the Chronosphere. You've got like Marana spells, Eroda to come after the Chronosphere. You've got Crystal Maiden Ultimate. You've got like Chakram, uh, and then eventually the Cataclysm. Like I, I wouldn't be concerned at all about uh, a Phantom Assassin. The faces void, I think they'll take. Oh. Well, we'll see if they ban that one out. Uh, other than that, I think you probably want to get rid of other frontliners. Like, Timbersaw is a decent frontline, but you want something to play in front of, like, your CM and your Marana and your Invoker. So, uh, Wraith King could potentially grab here. Do you agree with the, the Phantom Assassin ban? Do you think this is coming out uh, preemptively because they plan on picking, like, a, a mid laner, like, um, Lena or something like that on the Mystery Machine? It's also something that's just, like, pretty decent against Necrophos, I think. Is like they're like one of the things they're worried about if they want to take it as like a necro offlane. And maybe they're trying to bait for something like a tiny, which gets absolutely owned by the necro. So it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Still about like a minute and 20 seconds of reserve time left. So uh, time to decide uh, what it is that they don't want to play against. I think the face of void yeah. is a great ban. I think you're right by calling that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think uh, they're worried at all about something to do with Wraith King as well? Or do you think you can play into that with the heroes that you have so far? I think you don't mind too much about the Wraith King. It does make Bane's life a little bit more difficult, because he can't really fiend mm -hmm. grip Wraith King. At least yeah, until like he has a shard up. or whatnot, but... Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's uh, other options as well. You probably aren't going to want to go for anything with the lifesteal. Range carries, you're probably a little bit more keen to pick up here up against a necrophos um but again uh somebody like face of 40 is able to like time walk through whenever that uh death pulse comes out and stay on top of the necrophos i think it'd be decent for the laning phase they were to the tb instead that is very surprising i mean it's got a lot of armor to deal with the the ursa but i don't think necrophos cares too much about playing into the tb yeah i so think it's, it's just mostly so it's more a like game the matchup mid yeah, well, it's probably Necro mid, but it's not guaranteed. Like, the problem is they don't have last pick here on the Mystery Machine. So I think their play here is they would rather run the Necrophos into the offlane, I would guess. Mm -hmm. But it's like the Terrorblade's actually pretty, like, it's, it's a pretty good Terrorblade game. Like, it's really strong. The hero doesn't even feel that strong to me anymore. Uh, like, he, he's incredibly tanky, yeah, but. Like, they've nerfed Metamorphosis so many times. They've nerfed the Heroes Agility growth right now uh, a couple of times, down to, like, 4, uh, from, like, 4.6 or something like that that it used to be. Uh, he's got more strength than he used to, but he's just not, like, his overwhelming damage dealer that he used to be, in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe I, I undervalue the TB a little bit, but I, I don't think that he's, like, this amazing hero anymore. Against things like Aluna and Medusa, when you have that reflection to deal with, and you, like, take decent fights in them because you outranged them he feels pretty good but a lot of the other time uh not as good as he used to be all right a little bit of a forgotten hero the death prophet i was wondering if they were gonna go for the ember spirit but that hero did get like a pretty massive nerf on early levels of sleight of fist like it was pretty nuts mm -hmm. all right we go ahead and last medusa pick up the medusa upon the battlefield. Yeah, it's gonna be shaggy mid on the necro so tib off lane on the death prophet Nothing else very surprising here. Everything else kind of just falling into place. It is a little bit surprising that they would go for the Death Prophet even after the major nerf, because one of the things that just made her so strong was you leave her alone in the lane and she can just solo a tower at six. But mm -hmm. it's way slower now. 50% reduced damage onto building the ecosystem. I mean, it sucks that they ended up doing that. They, they didn't need to do that. Just need to <laughs> change it from uh, the update they did in 7.31. Like you can undo that, and then Death Prophet kind of goes back to being like pretty strong, but not unreasonably strong against buildings. 
I don't know. Uh, he got hit a little bit too hard, in my opinion, but still a good hero. These uh, Exorcism does a lot to enemy heroes in team fights. Um, I think you're going to struggle to stay on top of anybody. The other the person who plays that close to you is going to be able to hit with these uh, Spirit Siphons is the Timber Saw, and he can get away from it like immediately just by dropping a quick Timber Chain out away from you. Uh, I think I probably prefer Infamous's lineup here in game number two. They don't have an amazing way of starting fights. So they don't have that uh, sick comeback into the game either. No big team fight ultimates on Mystery Machine. Outside the exorcism, anyways. So uh, I don't know what your opinion is. Uh, which draft you think is better? But for for game two, I'm definitely on the side of Infamous. Yeah, I mean, I've got to be with you as well. Like, I think I look at this. Is this and it's... independent of last game though, or is last game slightly influencing your decision making here? I think it's still independent. Like. The Ursa has to go Diffusal here, and it is, like, a pretty good Diffusal Ursa game, but I don't really see him, like, shutting down Oscar's Timbersaw all that much, to be honest. Like, it's good for the first few levels, and I'm pretty sure Timbersaw just stops caring and kills you. Hmm. Should he really have this many Necrophos games? It is wild. Yeah, he's played a lot of Necro. 500 Necrophos games. Okay, we'll see if they can bring it back with the Enchantress uh, this game. I don't know. I, I, am, I do think the hero is just as strong as it, as it was before. Like, not being able to have the Warpine Raiders at level 1 and throw the Acorn shot is a bit of a nerf on this hero. But I, I think there's so many good, like, level 4 creeps you can dominate at the beginning of the game that it's not, like, a massive uh, influence on what happened in the early laning phase. Everything else this game... Uh, We'll have to see. I am interested in watching more Crystal Maiden, though. I'm a big fan of this hero. Oh, they found Tib on the Death Prophet. And they're trying to set First Blood up for their mid lane, but Alone just changes his target and looks at the Enchantress instead. So ends up going the way of Michael. So mm -hmm. Michael's uh, Marana off to a great start once again. Yeah, but it's not easy for Invoker to find these uh, like First Blood kills either. You've got like Cold Snap to try and drop on the enemies. It's tricky to get a last hit with uh, even your auto attack damage because that's pretty low despite the fact you with nothing but like stats and things that give damage two circlets a branch mantle and fairy fire if you had gone exhort you had like a uh, sunstrike to, to land the last hit it'd be a little bit easier but now when you're going this quad swex build which is basically what people do these days right yeah I'm curious how he ends up building his invoker because for me like oh my god they're actually going to go for the play behind the tower do they have frostbite? they do dude they're going to get it wait the creeps are blocking no the creeps don't re -aggro. Arrow. arrow oh arrow way off the mark there for Michael wait a minute all right. You were looking away from the brilliant man himself Jubei ends up setting up a kill onto Parker while we were watching that we live in Jubei's world, man. I don't understand how he was there. I really don't. Oh, Shaggy mid lane has to force a uh, fairy fire. Whew. Ooh, alone might go down for this. He is definitely He's going pop down. The fairy fire. Oh, he just needs to stay in range. Oh my gosh. He went ghost shroud. I didn't realize. Well, uh, infliction grabs Tib as well. Okay, this is some crazy gameplay happening here in this mid lane. Dude, alone? alone's about to die. Oh, He's just dead. Okay. Shaggy walked at him and pressed death ball, so that was it. He tips him afterwards. Oh my god. Mally Burgos is down as well. All right, we're into another bloodbath of a scenario here. Does snipe the courier with the Seder Banisher. Very nice. Yeah, all right. Steep belts on, everybody. <laughs> Wait for a wild ride. Michael's going to come here into the mid lane, dude. Alone has to walk back to base. His TP is still on cooldown. Wow. Yeah, that uh, sucks. Well, yeah. Michael's the carry dude. I already said this, right? He's playing the Cormorana again. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. He finally gets level three, so he has the bonus regen now available for him. This is a big deal. Yeah. Dude, he's, he's a two level advantage right now on the Shaggy. I'll give it to Alone. This is crazy. He got double null. Yeah. I usually see a lot of people go like null bracer on this hero, but 
if you like get this far ahead in your lane, going double null is actually really sick. <laughs> I saw somebody write in chat, Nef last charge his headphone in 1987. <laughs> Wait, what? Not wrong. Top lane tip about to drop. Oh, very nice. He does have this lightning, which is doing a ton of damage. Parker, oh, that was a lot of damage coming through at the last second there. A couple auto attacks. He's not going to have the mana for the lightning. Will he be able to finish off Parker? He does. Okay. Mali Burgos gets a trade. That's actually not that bad. And throws a tip off onto Parker as well. He is going to be able to come back to the lane. He doesn't have to walk uh, back to the lane, unlike the Invoker earlier. But they're off to a way better start this game on Mystery Machine. Yeah, much stronger lane. lanes, honestly. Jubei setting up behind alone. Is he going to hit him with the Nightmare? Uh, he takes the tower in order to set this one up, but Michael's coming in. Can throw out the arrow in just a second here. Oh, that's a lot of damage back onto the Necrophos. charges and a Death Pulse. Is he going to drop these? He doesn't. He's going to put it on cooldown. Instead, oh. he's going to hit the Salve. He's going to get hit by the Marana. Oh, Salve. Unlucky. Affliction here as well. I mean, second Salve coming through. Oh, my God. Affliction, don't you do it. He's going to do it. He wants it so bad. Barely misses, though. He missed. Yep. shaky has got the movement. Easy dodge for him. So All this right. is a uh, rough beginning to this game for the Invoker. <laughs> we saw Shaggy down 500 gold around this point last game. Now we see a loan down 500 gold. Yeah, it's a rough one. He can recover, you know, is uh, something Invoker is not terrible at, especially when you have your supports kind of sitting in the mid lane like this. They're just making sure to bottom try and lane. stabilize things. But yeah, bottom lane, Oscar gets ran down by Double King. And this is the thing. Early levels are definitely going to favor the Ursa. But once you get close to that level 6 in the Timber Saw, you actually have Kill Threat. But being able to uh, force the supports out of bottom lane, like Michael's been mid for the last couple minutes. Yeah, trying to help uh, alone recover here. I mean, if you're playing a melee here up against the Necrophobus in the mid lane, this would be just like unrecoverable. Top lane. Man, the Action Warpine Raider out. just rooted for an eternity. It's life. Okay. Contemplating its existence. Yeah, but Tim gets a deny off onto it, though. Uh, bottom. More stuff happening. Trying to dive uh, Jubei underneath the tower, but you can't play too aggressive here on Oscar. Double King is a decent vantage over you already. Uh, that's how he died last time. He ended up throwing a timber chain, like, pretty short range off into a tree right beside him. And it just, like, Double King walks him down there because of it. Uh, didn't get enough distance with that. But I think he has to be a little bit more careful. And he's being overly cautious now, I would say. He doesn't want to lane anywhere near this Ursa. Up in top, Affliction getting run down again by the Warpine Raider and uh, Mali Burgos. And pretty sure he's going to die as soon as his acorn shots off to cool down. Yeah. Just clicks her down anyway. That was a nice D ward though. Really smart play there from Affliction. Knew that the ward was going to come out. Gets the quick D ward before his death. Mid lane. They're going for the dive. Alone's going to be fine, but they're actually just trying to dive Parker. Top forces him to TP to base. Yep. He's going to wait a lot of time on the map. This is a much better start for the Mr. Machine. They've got only a 1k gold lead, but they're dominating all three lanes actually. The question is if they can keep it going. Well, I mean, they're keeping the tempo up here on the top lane. Putting the pressure on this uh, tier 1 tower. They got a catapult alongside them as well. If they cannot get through this Hellbear Smasher, it, it allowed the... Okay, now it goes down. It's going to give uh, the extra damage to the catapult as well. They might just get the, the tier 1 with this push. This would be pretty sick. Mid lane and bottom action happening, though. Yeah, this, this is a super long chase for Michael to eventually finish off Jubei there. Shaggy does have... Uh... That regen rune that was running though, so space made. Gonna be able to potentially grab the Reaper Scythe here at seven. He's holding the point for the moment though. Mm -hmm. The prize is mine. Yeah. Doesn't look like gonna connect, so keeping the top lane on uh, Marana wants to be able to get them off this tower and then go into Mali Burgos. He does eight, have eight wand charges. He can pop these if he wants to. Yeah. Death Prophet's still the same when it comes to that Spirit Siphon. Not much of a difference. It was mostly just the Shard uh, and some of the base health that was reduced, but 
Good stuff there as they find themselves the kill onto Michael. Parker forced out completely. Did he deny the tower? He did. So Parker does get the tower tonight and uh, he's gonna be just fine. But Shaggy is so deep right now. He does have that Reaper Scythe, 13 wand charges as well. Anyone could get baited by this. Oh, he's getting baited by himself, I think. MP does come through and he will fall. Four heroes to the mid lane will finally punish this Necrophos. And this kill needed to happen for the Invoker. He is not doing well for himself. <laughs> Meli Burgos almost has more farm than the Invoker. And Meli Burgos now has more farm than the Invoker. <laughs> yeah, so does the Marana. Yep. A rough start to this game. Burger the, throws a tip off into him. You need these shards more than I do right now, buddy. Wait a minute, he's got an urn, actually. This is like... Right. Well, he missed the cold snap there. Go on. I was going to say, the urn is like one of those like power spikes for the invoker once you get your first uh, charges. But yep. unfortunately did not he's get the... One more charge. Yeah. Uh, as long as he finds something with his next one, it'll be all right. And he's an arcane rune over here. We tried to set up on the, the shag. He was playing pretty far forward. He builds himself uh, while he's nice. going for that ward. Yeah. Uh, we haven't touched too much down on... I'm wanting to talk about the bottom lane, but I see action beginning to happen over here in the jungle. There's not much happening bottom. It's an Ursa fighting up against Timbersaw. Arrow onto the Death Prophet. They don't have the damage to kill her. Definitely not. And mid lane focusing up on the tower here once again. They do have fortification. They'll go ahead and finally drop that there. But Shaggy doing a little bit of damage. Wrap around here from alone. He's actually got to be careful. There comes the enchant, the Reaper Scythe. The physical damage from the Warpine Raider is enough. All right, Shaggy with his first Reaper Scythe kill of the game. Exorcism is going to come in from Tim. He's going to try and just chase down Parker here on the backside. He actually has no points available for that uh, Stone Gaze, but will just be able to TP home instead. Now, Michael, all leaps expended. They finally get the kill there onto Jubei as Affliction. Should go down here at some point. Yeah. There you go. Just the Death Prophet finally yeah, gets yeah. on top of her. Yeah. Very slowly run down there. Ursa's ready to go Roche. He's got the Morbid Mask. They've got a Warpine yeah. Raider. They're going to go I in. I they had two Warpine Raiders. That would have been sick. But I think yeah, they the saw this, though. This one up. Dude, the Warpine uh, Raider is so tanky. It is ridiculous. This. They would have seen this on the, the Sentry armor. Ward. Or sorry, the Observer Ward. Affliction did give them vision there. I think Arrow's going to come out in a second from uh, Michael. And yeah, teeping in on the CM as well. But they're going to be too late at this rate. There it is. Quick Roche on nine minutes, 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. well, now they're running back to the jungle. They want to be able to, to grab one of these heroes or take control of the map. Jubei, can he dodge into the nightmare? He can't. Arrow ends up coming out into him. I mean, great start to the game here for the Mystery Machine. They are technically down a kill, but all three top net worth positions belonging to them. A little bit of a different story, though, is the Medusa. Compared to last game, Double King had nowhere to farm. Parker is still managing to find some farm on the map here, which yeah. is a big difference. It just depends how fast this uh, Ursa is going to place. And unfortunately for the Medusa, this uh, Ursa is going straight into a Diffusal Blade. So, Double King is looking to just run Infamous over this game. I'm just looking to step inside the jungle. They're getting on top of High Shaggy. Here comes Pops that hood defiance. He's, I mean, he's actually dead here, I think. He has no way out. Tornado waiting just in time. Nightmare to dodge out the EMP damage. But yeah, the damage from Oscar is enough. Two really big kills. In comes Double King, though. Can he finish off the Timber Saw? He's able to just Timber Chain away. Tib rotates in as well, looking for Affliction. They don't have the damage to finish him off. He's down to 40 HP. He's out. Affliction will fall. But the rest of the heroes here are going to be okay alone here with this Ghost Walk being a massive nuisance. Yeah, uh, Spooky Ghost is haunting Double King right now. Is he just going to follow him? Please follow him. It is so funny. All right. He's not going to do it. Uh, he's going to move uh, over to scouting out uh, Mali Burgos. And I think uh, him and Michael are about to go on. We might set up with uh, Tornado. He's going to wait till these golems are gone, though. The golems are blocking any potential arrow. Well, actually, pretty sick there by Mally. Yeah, it was, him, it was good movement, though. but I don't think it really matters all that much. Yeah. And Shai Shaggy comes back in. I mean, all he's got is his defiance right now. He's working on Boots of Travel as a second item. But if he goes down another time here, he, like, he's spending a lot of time off the map. He's losing a lot of gold from these deaths. Bean Script comes out on the Mirana. 
interrupted. He gets yeah. them both, actually, so he can't follow up with that Reaper Scythe. Yeah, that's sick. That's really big. Jubei in Jubei. some trouble. Ooh. He's going to be able to dodge that out. Still gets clapped by the EMP, though, and on the backside of the fight, they found the Death Prophet. Just holding her down inside this Chakram. Affliction just doing so much work on this CM. Question is, can Tip actually survive this? He's got no Spirit Siphons left, and Oscar's still got plenty of mana. The rotation in from the Invoker. They get killed. Reaper Scythe on the backside, though, will help take down the Invoker. It doesn't give him the bonus regen, though. Yeah. And Oscar's still doing fine, it seems. He doesn't seem to care all that much. Movement by Mali ends up dodging that uh, Chakram. There's a nice left right. And every game, excuse me, every game, Mally Burger, just go to this hand of Midas on Enchantress. <laughs> it is just, so funny to me. Yeah, he's just playing a, a, a fourth core. I, I don't know if you've noticed the Invoker's net worth. You have to look pretty uh, the far Invoker's down. Net worth? No, the Invoker. Uh, yeah, I didn't see it down there. Shaggy. It has not improved the last couple of minutes. In a little bit of trouble, potentially slightly too aggressive here as Oscar on this timber saw is still very strong. EMP does do a lot of damage. They're going to drop that Moonlight Shadow tip here on the Death Prophet. Just going to close the gap. They do find a loan. He walks into him knowing he's got no way out. Oscar will be able to survive, but the Exorcism, he will help clean up this Tier 1 tower as they have no fort left. Yeah. So, third tower, uh the game on their side and clean that one up so get a mystery machine with complete map control They're up 1000 net worth now and not a, a huge advantage but it does get easier for them at this point doing a great job of taking advantage of uh, this aegis and putting pressure on the side of infamous i'm not sure what those exorcism spirits are but they look like they're flying clowns it's very weird flying clowns <laughs> you know what ricky you're a flying clown it's called the beautiful haunting that's Oh well, you know. Honking? Haunting. You know, like a clown nose honking? Oh, Beautiful okay. honking. Yeah, I could go for that. Yeah. Yeah. Nightmare comes out from Bane. He gets his ward pinged immediately. He's like, all right, well, I know yeah. about that one now. Yeah, he didn't have the mana to drop a fiend's grip on him uh, immediately afterwards, but I don't think anyone's coming in to follow up, anyways. Dude, Jubei's just following him around. I just want to get dewarded, man. Yeah. He knows Michael. He... he was the carry last game. He's just uh, focusing him. Yeah. yeah, Double King's come in now. They don't have vision on them, I don't believe. They catch uh, Bane for a fraction of a second there. He did show himself, but I don't think they saw Ursa. Oh, he's gonna be coming in now. Catch Enchantress here in the mid lane. Quick kill here. Oscar going for the Timber Chain out, but the Fiend's Grip from Jubei. A beautiful uh, exchange. They don't have the Aegis. It was just reclaimed, so Double King does need to be careful. Nice Nightmare from Jubei. Yeah. But looks like they will be able to just chase him down here. I don't think they'll have the damage to finish him off, though. He does one last auto attack from Parker. Gets him. Yep. Fades him up there. I mean, they could potentially. Oh, he. Isn't pressing his ult? Alright, there it is. Is that after uh, half a second here? I think he's gonna be able to get away from this one. I would think so. There's alone no way alone the continues this chase. Uh, you'd say that, but he's continuing the chase. Uh, I mean, he's just a uh, mobile ward at this point on the invoker. Yeah. It's gotta get There's some no XP. way he goes for this one. Dude, is he actually just like soaking up the Double King's XP by falling to the jungle? This is such a grief, man. <laughs> Is he going to go for his courier? Please tell me he goes for the courier. Please tell me he goes for the courier. All right, he's not going for it. He gets a lot of information, though. And so, uh, let's get out the enemy's going for him. Dude, is he going to get a Necrophosis courier? Get up. He's not going Ooh, for it. It's got the shard on it, too. That would have been a really big one to grab. Yeah, it would have taken, like, two, three auto attacks, though. Dude, Mali Burgos is farmed. He's just as farmed as yeah. the Marana, though, right? Like, they're both finding a lot of net worth on the map right now. Yeah. So, they clean up uh, the mid wave there rather than trying to engage the enemy. So, they actually have backdoor protection. They can't take this tier two despite moving their entire team to set up on this. The, uh, like, this is just a waste of uh, movement right now by Mystery Machine. Well, you say that, Medusa, but they're though. looking to go for the Medusa. Double King pops out and Rage just goes in. They have no Stone Gaze available. Shaggy needs the mana for the ult, but he's not going to get it. 
That EMP doing way too much work, and Parker will survive. They're going to lose Mali Burgos on the backside, and Double King as well. He's got no enrage. He is alone. The freezing field as well. Too much All right. Armor. Big overextension from the Mystery Machine. That's heavily punished. Yeah. I mean, that was an amazing setup by Infamous there. They they go and clear out the mid creep wave with uh, Invoker and Marana, like twice there. So they're not able to actually shove that tower, no creep wave alongside them. They think, okay, I want to dive the Medusa then. Uh, we want to get something from this movement, but not able to finish him off. Great EMP, great stall there by alone. Making use of his hero despite not having a ton of net worth. Now they're setting up on the dip down here. It was off the mark, but I don't think he'll survive this one. He's got a pretty oh, big stake might. there, yeah. And they turn on to alone? They've got dust. He can't get out of this. Pops the urn for a moment. Jubei managed to solo affliction on the other side, however. Cryptstorm will find the kill. Yep. Right, they turn that one back around. Great. He's still got Fiend's Grip. Hmm. Other side of the map, Park was farming, but getting uh, contested by Shaggy. Making sure this guy can't free farm and get back in the game. Dude, Parker, all right, they're gonna try to turn on the Shaggy here. Double King comes in, turn to stone. I mean, this guy does have a Diffusal Blade, so Parker has to be careful. Yeah. I mean, so does Oscar. There's a lot of damage that comes through eventually from this Ursa, but again, they're so deep. They've already uh, committed the Stone Gaze, though. EMP back behind the tower. There's gonna be Exorcism out from Tibbs. He's trying to stay on top of the Invoker, but they do just split it off. Affliction, however, gonna be the one that's left to die here as finally the Reaper Scythe gets used, the second one of the game. And now they're going to turn the attention to the mid-tier, too. Second, second stack, stack, sorry. Yeah, second stack. Unfortunately, the ghosts don't do damage to towers anymore. <laughs> Might as well not. Look how little this is, man. These are the little baby ghosts. They're clowns, man. <laughs> yeah, he's a clown trying to do damage to the tower with these things. Oh, Tib, he's got a BKB. He should use it. He's not getting a chance to. The arrow comes through, and Tib will go down. Jube tried to go for the save there, but it's not going to happen. Continuing to chase him down. Jube falling to Michael as well as the Enchantress. Infamous looks like they're ready to turn up the heat a little bit. Yeah. Uh, turning them now. I think the big time they're waiting for is this Eye of Scotty on the uh, Nusa, but every time they go too far forward, that tier two, it's difficult to get away from these heroes, right? They have so many slows uh, from Crystal Maiden. They've got great chase with this Marana. Uh, the majority of Invoker's kids is great at uh, following the enemies when they're trying to disengage as well. So every overextension that Mystery Machine has made has been very heavily punished by Infamous. Yeah, it's 16 to 20 now. Uh, barely any gold advantage here for the Mystery Machine. And this Medusa. Like we said last game, didn't really have anywhere to farm. This game, it's been farming the whole time. He's having a great, great uh, time this game on the Medusa. Nah. So you think uh, Ursa's gonna be able to catch back up and shut her down? Because I think you're kind of missing your, your timing now. Like, uh, once you have BKB, Diffusal Blade, Blink Dagger, I think that's when you want to be closing the game out for Double King. If things go any later than that, Infamous end up uh, running away with things. I think the game a... becomes a lot harder than it needs to. Yeah, I think this Ursa hero is going to do nothing. Spirit Vessel comes out. Enchantress four-staffed away by the hurricane of his own wild wing ripper. But Enchantress still way too much damage coming through. Oh, wait a minute. He might be saved by Shaggy here. Spirit Vessel won't be enough to finish him off. And alone now trying to hobble away here. I don't Just think he's going to be able to make for it. another two seconds. He will. Oh, he breaks his own invis as soon as yeah. Dust is expiring. Does get the Spirit he's Vessel kill, but costs him his own life. Yeah, but he got more Spirit Vessel charges with it. What's really more valuable, Invoker with like, uh, Invoker position five or two Spirit Vessel charges? Two Spirit Vessel charges. Yeah, for sure. Double King Dude, here, double fighting King, up yeah, with yeah, Oscar he's, he's got Diffusal Blade. Oh, the Fiend's Rip interrupted Dude, by the Stone Gaze really big and no one rages. Double King used it aggressively to kill the Crystal Maiden. He's gonna regret that one big time. Arrow connects onto the Necrophos, trying to take a lot of or being very- Oh, he doesn't Death Seeker him. He gets the kill anyway. Okay. No mana popped that Essence Ring there. Now Parker, he's going to TP out. Uh, turn that one around. I mean, that was a sick uh, jump in there by the Medusa. That Stone Gate saving him from the Fiend Grip. We've seen that a couple of times, but uh, in other games, but uh, they managed to turn that one back around on Mr. Machine. I mean, you just don't have enough map control. The fact they still have this tier one tower standing, it makes it so difficult for them to keep these chases up. Now invading through the jungle onto a lone. 
And you have a thousand less net worth than your Crystal Maiden. Alone's game is so rough, man. He's just I'm playing five sure invoker. Midas. Yeah, he's like committed to being five invoker. Like Crystal Maiden has a Midas. Like they they actually like unironically are committing to this. The CM over the invoker. Yeah, like they're unironically <laughs> like, no, committing to it. Alone realized how bad his game was, and like Michael and CM, like these heroes can actually do quite a bit with farm. So he's just basically a mobile ward who throws Spirit Vessel and Alacrity, and that's about it. Yeah, Scotty's completed now on Parker, by the way. Um, it does not matter how poor your invoker is if your Medusa is this rich. Yeah, Shaggy on the run here. Arrow's going to connect nice to Ice Wall as well, trapping her in place. Dude, he can't go anywhere. He's stuck. Yep. Shaggy is just dead. Played perfectly uh, here by Infamous. They're now looking for Jubei. Ends up being a double kill for the Timbersaw. I mean, I suppose Invoker is one of these heroes. Like, it doesn't matter how poor you are. You're gonna, gonna continue to have an impact on this game. All you need is a Spirit Vessel and be able to cast your spells. Yeah. Now they're taking Roshan for the second time. This was a... Uh, I didn't see how quick this respawn was. They ended up taking the first rush at like nine minutes into the game though, right? Yeah, nine minutes, 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. Aghanim Shard uh, picked up. Is it going to take that here on the Medusa? Oh, yeah. Cold-Blooded actually doing work against the Diffusal. Yeah, at full mana. Unfazed as he runs at these heroes. Now, Tornado the connects. Up in the air. Yeah, he gets the kill. All right. Yeah. Where's that uh, Pepe Lap position five invokers now, huh? <laughs> I mean, he's still bottom of the net worth. He's still position five invoker. <laughs> I mean, I'm still laughing. But he's winning. He is winning. Six k net with advantage now for the side of Infamous. Uh, as the machine's starting to fall off, they don't have amazing heroes at taking team fights. We discussed that at the beginning of the game. So when they overextend a couple times, I, they really feel the hurt from that. Getting back into this uh, again is not going to be easy for them. You have the nine second BKB on Ursa, but I need the Blink Dagger as well to be able to jump on these heroes and blow them up, make use of this BKB. Ali Barris picks himself up uh, a four staff. Almost Look at alone, man. Him. Look what this guy's doing. He's just such a nuisance. Just run around behind the tower, ghost walk, forces tips BKB, but you got the Scotty in here from the Medusa, continuing to slow him down. It's going to be a first kill there onto Oscar. That is big. You still have the Aegis on the Parker. He's going to go ahead and pop gaze. that Stone Gaze, get really aggressive. Reaper Scythe comes through. Is it enough to finish off Michael? He will lose the. Uh, Enchantress, but ooh, Jubei almost sunstrike there by alone. The cold snap doing some work. Shaggy trying to stand his ground here on the front lines. That's gonna be the tornado, the EMP, a beautiful, uh, I mean, Jubei actually owned with that nightmare. That was sick, keeping Shaggy alive potentially, but nah, still gets ran down up onto the high ground. You've lost Double King on the low ground and Jubei goes down as well. Ends up being a big win here from Infamous despite it all. Sunstrike, oh my God. Alone is still feeling himself despite <laughs> Literally being the five. Uh, he's got no reason to. <laughs> Despite having no reason to. Yeah, chase him down. That entire fight, Jubei's not able to contribute. Stone Gaze comes in the moment that Jubei wants to, to walk forward and get a Fiend Skip off into somebody. Like, this Medusa, uh, Stone Gaze is just such a good cancer to try to catch somebody out in, the, in these team fights with the, the Fiend Skip. Just gets interrupted, like, immediately when you try to go for it. Parker gets to play super far forward because he's still got the Aegis. Now, Mally Burgo is getting run down inside her own base. Uh, Tip. Just dies. Thought he could stand his ground, but Spirit Sunstrike? Siphon. Oh, it ends up connecting! He gets him! All right. Broad. This Invoker, he's pretty good. Dude, how can you say that? He, he's got less net worth than the Crystal Maiden still. Dude, he agreed to play five this game. I don't understand what the question is. He got Spirit Vessel, and then he ran around the whole map, just invis, just <laughs> griefing heroes. Like... They think he's a genius because of his adaptability. Yeah, this guy, you yeah. know. The greatest invoker player who's ever lived. Probably. People talk about, you know, society and, uh, you know, species evolving, right? This guy's done it. Alone is on a whole nother level. <laughs> he's evolved the Dota 2 meta. <laughs> he can just adapt based on his conditions to a different position. Yeah. Incredible gameplay. 
it does not invoke her as well. <laughs> By the way, this is not permission to go and like grief your games and lose the mid lane and think everything is going to be fine. Everyone, please try to win. <laughs> please try to farm. Michael has Boots of Bearing done. I want Affliction to get this shard so that he can do the whole classic run around during freezing field. We haven't seen it done quite yet. Tib just getting ran down into the base. Parker doesn't care. He just 1v3 runs on top and pops a stone gaze. Double, ga Double King thrown into the air by a Yule's no enrage left. I mean, what do you do here? Tib caught by a nullifier? Jubei, Jubei? Down so much nightmare for the moment, moment, but he's dead as well. Yeah. And now they're just gonna get right back to it to clean out these buildings. At the very least, they're not gonna be able to, uh, now they just call it. GG is out, I mean. They would have been able to secure Meg because of that tier 2 tower, but they feel like this game is just too far gone. Mystery Machine. This will be it for them. They would be right. I think this game is indeed too far gone. A rough one. They had the beginning of this game. After the, the first game, I see how well they perform uh, to start this one off, but you know they did have a bunch of early game heroes. Uh, it made sense that they were doing better uh, earlier on, but it was just such an amazing job at adapting to alone having a bad game, man. Like, I thought this was, like, way too far gone. The overwhelming advantage that Shaggy had in the mid lane, especially after that solo kill that he ended up finding onto him, walks yeah. up to him, hits him with the Q. <laughs> I mean, he's that literally is... 2,000 gold ahead at 10 minutes. Like, he has 5k yeah. net worth on the Necrophos. Your Invoker has 3,000. Like, that is such a ridiculous advantage. But at the same time, like I said, they kind of just looked at their game plan and was like, whatever, like, we win this if this goes late, so let's just kind of stall this out they picked up midas on a crystal maiden for some reason um but at the end of the day like they didn't really slow down this medusa's farm in the mid game right like parker was still mm -hmm. finding a ton and double king on the air side not nearly uh not nearly as free of a game for him yeah i wasn't able to play fast now but cut, cut it around reasonably well inside these team fights as well the crystal maiden pick i really did feel uh big like i'm gonna be surprised if i don't see this hero picked up more at the major I think we will see it a lot more at the major. I think this hero is getting, starting to get a lot of attention. It's just like one four one or like one three one. I think is the build we're seeing out of a lot of them, and mm -hmm. it, it yeah does wonders. This hero low cooldowns on the spells, but a lot of heavy mana costs. So that's the only real downside. Yeah. But game or series one now in the bag. I don't know if we're gonna have an interview quite yet. We're gonna have to uh, reach out to Infamous and find out. But until then. We're going to do a short break, everyone. We'll be back with our second series of the day, which is going to be Nouns versus Osmium. Probably a much closer series. Um, big series for both of these teams as they're still fighting for that top four contention. So big game ahead. We'll be uh, back after a short break, everyone. Again, this is the BTS Pro Series Season 11. We'll see you soon.